He told us to go into all the world. Not go in our homes. Amen? How, what are we go into all the world with? The gospel, the measuring line, the plummet. Amen? That has a standard. Amen? This is what he wants us to do, is have a standard where we're not going to be moved away from it. We're supposed to, the other people are supposed to be moved. Because their life don't line up with what God's word said. So it should draw them closer to God, or it'll have them just leave away from it. Amen? But we're supposed to affect society. Society shouldn't be telling us what affects us. I've been stirred up a little bit uh, just by what's been going on, amen? And uh, I know um, God wants us to be, what I was saying earlier, impactful in this, in this world, amen? He, he wants us to be an impact and not be impacted by uh, things of this world, amen? If you could put up the picture, I want you to see something. Not that one. But here. Does anyone know what that is? All right, yeah, I knew. Some people work on homes and all that. They know what that is. And that's a plumb line, amen? This thing's been around for a long time. But I just want to share a few things because there is a plumb line of God, amen? And just understand a plumb line, what it does because of the gravitational force of the earth, you know, it rotates little by little. You don't see it or wind. But what a plumb line does, it, do, it doesn't alter or shift with the pulses of, in other words, of a carpenter. Amen. It says it remains true and it all must line up with it or gamble being crooked. And in other words, it's a line. It has a weight at the bottom with a string, and it's supposed to keep a direct straight line. Amen? Where it, vertically, it's supposed to keep a line. I know with chalk boxes, they do where they slap the line across. It's supposed to be horizontal, I believe, right? Yeah, but vertical, this is supposed to keep structures straight. So they drop this plumb line. They still use it today? Yeah, okay, well, there you are. But these been around. It's in the Bible. So they've been around thousands, like thousands of years. It's kind of like God, he don't change, amen? They got a little more like lining tools today and stuff. I think even now they got like the laser line. You can use, oh, I tried that. I'm not too good with that one. But if you do the chalk, it slaps it down and it gives you a straight line so you can go off of it. Amen? So you don't get off course. That's what it is. It doesn't make it crooked. Because you can, you can start doing something and the line you started off with, if you don't have it marked, you can waver off. And then when you look, it's not going to be good because it messes up. If it's with that, it can mess up the whole foundation. And that, but the, a plumb line, they call it a plumb bob, it stays true to the line. Some, they use it on people to, for their back. They'll put a line up and see if their, their, their back, if they have, uh, what's it called, uh, when your spine's kind of crooked. What's it? Huh? Well, they call it something else, you know, a person. Huh? Osteoporosis. Yeah, that's it. You know, and they have to, they check it, but they can use a plumb line actually to see if a person's straight, walking straight, not crooked. And that's what God wants to do in our life. Amen. God uses a plumb line and we're going to see, we're going to, we'll pray, but he uses a plumb line, but it's the plumb line of his truth, his word. And God never gravitates from it, but we're not supposed to gravitate from it because when we do, we can go crooked. And God wants to make the crooked things straight in your life and the rough roads smooth. Amen? 
So I know for all the people who work on houses, they know the plumb line. Amen. I never really use the plumb line too much in my line where I do floors and all that. But you got to do a chalk when you do it because when you start, if you need something to line up with, you don't want the whole floor looking crooked and start to, uh, nothing lining up when you come to the end because you got to be able to do it right. Amen. I know he does. He did first two for a year. But that's what, uh, but with a building, you need the foundation where if it's not right, that whole house, won't, you'll start getting cracks and everything in it. And it's good. That's why they got codes, people to watch over. Because if it's not laid right, that whole house, the building can go. You see with the hurricane, some of them that had the, uh, the stip pillars or stilts in it, the metal ones, it dug deep down. That's why they're still standing. Amen? I mean, you could see it. It took 150, not even just wind. It took 25 feet of water, and the thing's still standing. Well, obviously, they paid a couple million dollars for that house, but uh, it's still standing. You know? And there's some of the other ones, <laughs> they're not. But I'm saying buildings and all that, they have to have a good foundation. So let us pray, and then we'll get in the word. Amen. Father, we thank you and honor you this day. We thank you for the truth of your word. We thank you and give you the glory and praise for all you have done, all you're doing, all you're going to do, Father God, in our lives, through our lives, Father. Let your words, Father God, resonate in our hearts, Father God. Let us be in line with your word, your Holy Spirit, Father. We thank you for opening our eyes, enlightening them, opening our ears to hear what you have to say to your children, Father God, your sheep of your pastors, Father. We thank you, Father, whatever gifts, manifestations of your Holy Spirit, we want to always give you the praise, the honor, and the glory for it all, Father, in Jesus' precious name, hallelujah, amen, and amen. I want to share a few things because here God talks about plumb lines in the Word of God. It's funny because the Word of God, it deals with everything in a person's life. I don't care what type of field you're in. You could be a banker. He talks about what bankers do. He talks about not using usury. Amen? To go above and beyond when you lend money to people to take advantage of them and Get of them where it's on the point of extortion where you're draining them. Amen? There's biblical principles for it, and there is a standard God used for it that you don't abuse your authority, abuse the things you do. They got, it talks about how doctors, it talks about the body and the, the body, of, body of Christ. It talks about the body in the Bible. It talks about building. Amen? You go throughout the whole Bible. Noah built the ark. Solomon built the temple. Amen? You go on further, they talk about laying the foundation. You talk, it, go, it deals with everything that you can think about in life that God's word has something to say about it. He has a standard for it. Amen? So we don't get off track. You know, that's why even naturally, before you become a real estate, before you become a builder or a contractor, before you do things, they want you to get a license. It isn't really having the license that says it. It's the work behind the license saying you know what you're doing. Amen? That's why you take, before you drive a car, you got to learn how to drive. Otherwise, you got people that are on the road where I see all the time, but... uh they got a license, but it doesn't look like they know how to drive. I, they don't see stop signs. They don't know what a red light is down here. They just go through it. I guess they're just so casual with it. Up north, they don't do that. But here, it's yellow. No big deal. We'll go. It's red. Just keep it going. We need to get somewhere like no one else has to. But, I mean, there's stop signs. And plus, when you got gated communities, Oh, those stop signs don't even exist. They just go right through it. They're like, no one's here. Just keep going. There's nothing. I mean, uh, and don't even get me started with the gates. 
because you got the gates that open, but then you got the little plastic things that go up and down. They put that where we live, man. They just drive right through. They break the thing right off. It's like every week they're putting a new one on. I'm like, what is going on here? Oh, yeah, well, I know they got cameras there, so, you know, they're getting the people who are doing that stuff. But I'm just saying, with everything, they want people to have a certain standard so they know what they're doing. Amen. So they can follow by something. Amen. A rule. Amen. Even putting the Bible together, they had a rule. Amen. To put all the books together, to weigh it out, to see. They call it the canon books. But if you study it, they took it and they put a lot of people together, but they weighed the scriptures and they saw how they were if they had authority with it, if they had conviction with it. You can study the history of it. You know, this wasn't just something thrown together and they didn't know what they were doing. They made sure they took very, uh, as far as seriously, when they put the Bible, because it's God's word. And when, because me being born in a Jewish family, I know what it was just saying the word of God. They won't put God in their mouth. You know, I say it now because we know the Lord, I know Jesus, but they won't even write God's name. They put G slash D. That's how much they reverenced it because they wouldn't want to use his name in vain where you just say it for nothing. Like when people, something happens, they go, oh, God. They just throw and then someone says something, goes, Jesus. You know, they're saying their name. They don't even know the Lord. They say they don't even believe it, but yet it comes out their mouth. You you don't understand? Then they want to use, I'm saying, I'm saying God's name. They put the word, it's God blessed, but they want to put the word, I'm not saying the word, but I'm saying, you know, when you say damn, he doesn't damn something. Amen. That's a bad thing. He's not doing, he's there to bless. Amen. People condemn themselves at times just because of what they live and what they don't believe. It says, by your words you are justified, and by your words you're condemned. You know, it's out of your own mouth. Amen. Out of the abundance of the heart, the mouth speaks. Amen. And that's what the word says. So if a person said they don't believe in God out of the abundance of the heart, the mouth speaks. They're saying it. They do it to themselves. It isn't God doing it because he's given us a free will. But people of God, we have a plumb line that God wants us to follow, which is a standard so our life isn't crooked. Because God used a plumb line in the Old Testament. And we'll see, and it's not that it's no longer used, but it isn't used the same way because when he did the plumb line in the Old Covenant, a lot of times it was because of a judgment when he used it. And when he drew that line, then judgment comes. Because when judgment came, they were, they moved, stepped out of his mercy and his grace and just went off doing their own thing. Today, because of Jesus, we have an intercessor. Amen? One that made an atonement for us all. But he still does have a plumb line of standard that we as believers should live by. Amen? So if we go to Isaiah 28, right here, a plumb line is really an unmovable standard because that's a straight standard which is biblically, according to the word, it's truth. Amen? That you don't steer from it. You don't compromise from it. You stand straight with it. The plumb line isn't supposed to be moved. We're supposed to be moved to the plumb line. Amen? A lot of times people think they could change the plumb line, but the plumb line's a straight, narrow line that makes things correct. And if you apply it to your life, it will make you actually spiritually healthy in your walk. Praise God. You, you won't be so, you won't be like a person that's a defeated Christian. You'll be one that learns that's a victorious one. One that overcomes. Amen. 
no matter what the standard of the world is saying and what they're trying to implement, what they're trying to say, what they're saying's right, right, if it doesn't line up with the plumb line of God's word, I don't care what they say. Amen? We're not supposed to compromise our standard to them. Amen? We're not supposed to change our way because of the world. That, this word, all these people and everything, they come and go. But know who's been here the longest? Right here. This word hasn't changed. This word hasn't moved. And this word isn't going away. People who change things, they're going to come and go. Friends who think, hey, you're not doing the right, they'll come and go as well. Your job that says, hey, you can't do this and that, that can come and go as well. But know what's going to keep standing is the word of truth. This won't leave. This ain't fading away. This is not going anywhere. Everything else will fade away. But God's word's going to remain the same. It says in Romans 1, let God be true and every man a liar. I don't care if they're a scientist. I don't care if they're a Congress. I don't care if it's the president. If it doesn't line up with the word of God, you have no right to stand with it. Amen? You see a lot of men, countries, and rulers throughout history, Rome, they didn't want to line up with the standard of God. Where is it today? And they were the strongest in the world at that time. You, you go throughout history and look, the ones who thought they could, was going to rule, it looks like, yeah, they're ruling for a time, but it says in the book of Job 22, the triumph of the, the wicked is short. It says it's short. Know what's long? is God's plumb line. Because this line's been going down through ages and through histories, and it hasn't changed. And know what's even funny? The people of Israel... If you look today, they're the only nation still here today a lot that's remained and even went back to their own homeland, what God promised in the Word. Have you heard any other people that you talk about? No, nah. but if you talk about Israel, you'll see it's the only nation that's still there today. When countries try to wipe it out, try to get rid of it, try to get rid of the people, all throughout different histories, Egypt thought they could. Where's Egypt now? Where's Pharaoh? Because there ain't no Pharaoh there anymore. There's still prime ministers and kings today in Israel, but where are the rest of them? They try to always change the plumb line of God's rule, but what ends up happening? God ain't moving. God's still on the throne. He ain't changed. He ain't, God ain't double-minded. He ain't, maybe I should, maybe I should. And uh -uh, God's still straight with what his standard is. Amen. He laid the foundation and the foundation hasn't moved. It says right here, verse 16 in Isaiah. Yeah. Actually, we'll go to read out of the Amplified, but I'll start at verse 14. Watch what it says here. He's talking to the people of Jeru of Israel. He says, wherefore, hear the word of the Lord, ye scornful men. What does it talk about in Psalms 1? Blessed are the ones who walk, walk in that of what? In the counsel of the ungodly, nor sit in the seat of who? The scornful people that laugh, mock at God's word. Ah, oh, you guys are crazy. You're the holy rollers, whatever. Know what? There's a standard that God has. So as you call people holy rollers, they used to. Now they just say, hey, whatever, you know, try. Listen, it says, who rule these people in Jerusalem? Look at what he says. Because you have said we have made a covenant with death and with Shiloh, the place of the dead, we have an agreement when the overflowing scourge passes through, it will not come to us. See, they think when they made a, a covenant with what they wanted to, everything will just pass from them. I'll tell you what, God's word says in Psalms 89, a covenant he won't break, no altar or change the things that has gone out of his mouth. See, God's 
stays with his covenant. People can make covenant with other things, agreement with other things, see how long they stand. But if you stay in agreement with God, his word will stand true to what he says, and you won't stray away. It says, for we have made lies our refuge, and in falsehood we have taken shelters. In other words, they observe lying vanities, things that people want you to believe, and that could be all over the media. It could be all over YouTube. See, when you make it simple in your life and you just follow the truth of God's word, if whatever they say, I don't even care if it's me, if it don't line up with the word of God, you don't have to put nothing to it. That's why we as individuals have to know the word of God for ourselves so we can go back and say, hey, what this person's saying, is this what the word of God says? And if it doesn't line up, you don't have the right to even do it. I don't care. It's on your job. They tell you to do something. It might be wrong. Be like, no, -uh, I got a standard. Whether it costs me my job, hey, you know what? There's other ones. I don't care. You ain't going to have me do something that I'm not doing against God's word. So have a good day. You want me or not me, don't have me. It's all right. Either way, God, I'm in God's hands. I'm not in your hands. I've had it happen before they fired me. I didn't care less. Because know what? I was doing what God told me to do, and it didn't matter, and they could fire me, whatever, hire me, but it ain't going to strain me from what the Word of God says. You don't compromise your life for people or your job or this system. Amen? Because God does have a standard. Amen? He has a standard how we, we, we live in righteousness, in truth, in holiness, and in love. Amen? It's a love. On their Old Testament, it was a little, I'm saying where it was, because the righteousness was of your works. We're made righteous by Christ Jesus. Amen? But we're, it doesn't give us the right just to go and do whatever we want. Amen? His grace isn't there to, that paid the price for us to do whatever we want. Amen? It's for us to line our lives up with what his word says that we're to do. Amen? Amen? Because it's a righteous call. So I'm just saying, look at what he says here. I'm sorry. It says, he said, they say, under falsehood, they hid ourselves. But what does the word of God say? It says, therefore, thus saith the Lord God, behold, I am laying in Zion. Where is that? That's the people. That's the church. Amen. For a foundation, a stone, a tested stone, a precious cornerstone of sure foundation so this stone that jesus is he's the rock he's the foundation he's the chief cornerstone that's what holds the building together amen he's also the foundation it's not crooked it don't have cracks in it amen when floods come in it ain't gonna be moved amen gibraltar it has nothing on it the prudential rocket, that could be moved, but God won't. Amen? So I'm just saying, that's your insurances or whatever. They could say, you are safe in our hands. Are you a man? Well, we're not that trustworthy that we're safe in your hands. In God's hands, we're safe. Amen? So he said he's a tested stone, a foundation, a precious cornerstone, and he said it's sure. It's a sure foundation. And he who believes or trusts in, meaning believes, relies on and adheres to that stone will not be what? Ashamed. See, when you walk with the Lord long enough, he'll show you. You stand on that word, you're not going to be ashamed. I don't care. You could be afraid. Like, man, I don't know. Lord, you put me out there. I, I, I don't know, man. Uh, how do I get this or that? I, I'm believing you, Father. Well, if you just hold fast to God, you won't be ashamed. It says, whoever calls on the name of the Lord shall not be ashamed. Amen? Or give, in, or give way or hasten away. Or in a sudden panic. See, people who panic and worry... They don't, they're not confident 
in God's word. It's not saying you're a bad person or anything. You got to get the word in you where when test and things come in life, it's not going to move your standard. Amen? It's not going to have you shake away. Where like you're like, well, how is this going to happen today? I, I don't know. What am I going to do? Listen. God's word said, I have never seen the righteous forsaken, nor his seed begging bread. God, well, if you just look at animals, does the birds look like they worry about what they're going to build in the morning? Do they worry about what they're going to eat every day? They just do their thing that they were created to do. They go and get their worms in the morning. They go and get their food at, you know, in the morning. They even get little sticks and they'll build a little nest. They're not building you mansions or whatever. They just build a little nest for they can have the family and then they leave. And they're not worried. They're not fretting over, oh, where's the stick coming from? The Lord provided it. The trees are still here. The worms still come out in the morning. He provides food. So if a bird can't, doesn't worry, why as we people of God have to worry when we can put our trust in the Lord? The confidence you get is knowing what his word says he can do for you and what he has for you and how he'll be with you. He said he'll never leave you nor forsake you. Amen? Your friends may leave you. So what? If they were a friend, yeah, they wouldn't be, they would be there. But if they want you to do what they want, they, they ain't really true friend. Like yesterday, I'm just going to use this example. If she's watching, I don't know. But uh, I thought about this this morning. I was helping the lady out, and it was a little baby. And I said, yeah, um, what's going on? She said she broke her hand, so it was hard for her to push the thing. And I was like... Oh, man, when did you have the baby? He looks only a couple weeks old. And she goes, oh, that's not my baby. That's my friend. I'm like, what? The where's your friend? She walked out the door and left her with the baby pushing the thing. So I helped her push it, and her friend's across the road. I'm like, what kind of person is this? You leave your own baby with someone else that has a broken wrist, and she's trying to push with a phone in her hand, push the baby. So I'm pushing the baby out the door to help her out. I came to realize, like, what? Then who kind of friend is this? She leaves her baby, a brand new baby, and then she leaves her with a friend to push it who can't even push the, push the uh, baby carriage. Man, some friends you just need to get rid of. They just wait. They're, they're, that's getting you off the plumb line of what God has for you. Amen? They, they're a weight on you. They're, 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 they're trying to get you off the plumb line. That ain't a friend, man. Even, I'd be like, what kind of mom is this? She just walked off and left the baby with a woman and came and pushed the you know, baby carriage. I'm just like, man, some things is common sense. You know, some people... They act like they're with you, but they're not. Amen? So one of the, here, but Jesus says this. He, he's a plumb line, and watch what he says here. In verse 17, you don't have to panic or anything. He said, I will make justice the measuring line and righteousness the plumbing. That's the plumb line. And he said, and hail will sweep away the refuge of lies. Talking about when God brings it, the hail, it will remove it away, and the waters will overwhelm the hiding place or the shelter. Meaning the people who trusted in those things, when they're swept away, they'll know it's all a lie. How many people listen to things that are on TV, I don't care, political or whatever, if it doesn't line up with God's word, you don't have no right to even believe it. See, today's society is trying to give you a standard and a measure that's outside of God's word. They're trying to implement it in schools. They're trying to implement it in our cities. They're trying to tell you 
what's the right way of living. And we, as a body of believers, have a standard by God's measuring line of how we're supposed to live. Amen? He told us to go into all the world. Not go in our homes. Amen? How, what will we go into all the world with? The gospel, the measuring line, the plummet, amen, that has a standard, amen? This is what he wants us to do, is have a standard where we're not going to be moved away from it. We're supposed to, the other people are supposed to be moved because their life don't line up with what God's word said. So it should draw them closer to God or it'll have them just leave away from it. Amen? But we're supposed to affect society. Society shouldn't be telling us what affects us. Amen? They're not our standard. They don't, they don't even know their left foot from their right foot. That's what it said in the book of Jonah. When Jonah went there and told the people of Nineveh to repent because God's going to destroy this nation, they repented. They wanted to put their line their life plummeted with God's word because they didn't want to be destroyed. So they lined their life up with what the word have said. Know what God did? He, he didn't destroy the nation. They fasted and prayed for 40 days because what? God told Jonah he was all mad anyways. He was like, man, these wicked people, they need to be destroyed. But Jesus, he ain't come to save the righteous. He come to save the sinner. But the sinner isn't the one that should give us the standard. It's us that should be impacting the world with a righteous standard. Amen? In whatever we do. Amen? This should be a sobering thing because that's how we do. Because the world has nothing to look forward to but the people who are created in God's likeness and image, amen, the ones who are believers who are to shine their light in the world, amen, we're supposed to be affecting the world, you know what they did, one thing he mentioned a while back, he said, uh, I'll say one thing that he was talking about, Calvin, when, uh, when the Reformation took place, and I'll mention this, it was pretty strange. I, I didn't know that all together. I know about Calvin and then how the Reformation all took place and all that. I didn't know that when the Christians were in the majority, know what the governor did? He said he came to them and asked them, what should we do as people to do what your word tells? Because they didn't know it. But they came to them to find out how are we supposed to live? What type of rules and standards are we supposed to have since the majority was the believers? See, the world don't have a problem with you just being in a church. As long as you keep it to yourself, you're good. But once you start taking what the Word of God says and put it into the world, then they're like, oh, you're affecting our territory. Why? Because they like the way they live and it starts affecting their lifestyle, affecting their money. They got a problem with it, but it's the devil behind the whole thing. Because see, the devil thinks this is his. But we're supposed to go into the world and affect it. He said, whatever our feet shall tread upon, he's given to us. We're not supposed to be running from them. We're supposed to be going into the world and affecting the world and giving them a standard of what, how things are supposed to be the right way. I want you to see something. Look at here in the book of Deuteronomy chapter 4. This is the old covenant, but look at what God said to this. Ooh, I didn't even get it. I'm all closed soon, but... It's just a few scriptures I have, but see, there is meaning behind what the word's saying. And I didn't even get much into what I want to talk about. But here in Deuteronomy, <clears throat> it says, now I said chapter 4, I'm sorry. Let me see. I think that's what I said. Yep. Let me go here. Here we 
Let me get over here. Right here, chapter 4. Look at what it says here. Because we shouldn't have the world influencing our children. Amen? The devil wants to affect the children of the next generation, the little ones. Why? Because they could be all confused. They don't know what's right, what's wrong. They don't even know who they are. And what kind of people are these going to be when they stand up and they're going to be in the political field, be attorneys, be court leaders, be doctors? I don't want no one telling me what to do when they don't even know who they are. They can't even tell the difference between a man or a woman. What kind of thing, what kind of thinking is that? This was in the beginning. How has it changed? It never changed. It's just people want to change the way they justify the way they live to make it right against what God's standard of way of living is. They don't want to line up with what the word of God says. So look at what he says here to the people, God. He says here in chapter 4, I must read verse 1. He said, now listen and give heed, O Israel, to the statutes and ordinances which I teach you. And do them, that you may live and go in and possess the land which the Lord thy God, your fathers, gives you. Now he said, the Lord your God of what? Your fathers, go back there, of your fathers give you. You know, when it says fathers, fathers is our forefathers. The ones who lived according to the Bible. And you can go through history, even here in America, look at Washington. You can look at different ones, Benjamin, Franklin, whatever. And you could see there was men of God. And these men would pray and fast to hear what God had to say to write out things that were constitutionally right. I'm not talking about the other things. They wanted to get away from stuff. But if you go back to the forefathers, even Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, and David, and all that, I'm not saying everyone walked perfect, but they kept God's word, amen, and they lined themselves up with what they would in God's word. If they went astray, they repented and got back on line with the plummet line. Amen? To go back so they be on the straight line. That's the standard for your life. Amen? So he said, the God of your fathers, before, before, I leave, before I go to that, watch what it says here. I want you to see some. Go to Proverbs 22, verse 28. And then we'll go back here. I want you to see some because that word fathers, it says, remove not the ancient landmark which your fathers have set up. You know what a landmark is? It's a boundary. You know what boundaries are? They set things in order where you don't go outside of them or you don't let others come inside of it. Amen? You put boundaries. God puts boundaries. Amen? He put boundaries on nations so the sea doesn't go over. Otherwise, the hurricane would still be going right through here. It would have never decreased. It would have came all the way through. It would have been there, never left. But God set boundaries. It even says in Acts 17, among the oceans. And he put people in different nations, it talks about. But there's boundaries that God even put. Amen? And there's certain boundaries that are put that we're not supposed to go outside of or even tamper with. Well, like God put, what's it called, in the ecosystem. He got the clouds. He's smart. He knows what he's doing. Amen? And then you got some scientific people who think they know everything, that they think they could change the weather and put some carbon type of stuff in the clouds and that they can make it where it won't rain or be too cold. They start tampering with stuff like that. They're going to see a change, and it isn't going to be nice. You know, now because you could see already they're trying to tamper with biological things. It's crazy. If you don't think it's crazy, they said on the news, and I could tell you, I said it. They got it just to show you how crazy society is today. They said in California, because you know when you're in prison, men go to men's prison, women go to women's prison. 
Well, now they had transgenders going to women's prison and they're making babies up in there. You want to see how far-fetched it's gone? I'm just telling you, people gone way out of the standard and balance of what things are supposed to be. I'm just, letting, I'm just sharing. There's things. They don't tell you everything on the news. They try to hide it from people and let, oh, you don't want them to know everything going on. But I'm saying things are getting out of whack, but it's time for God's people. That's why he said when you're a light in darkness, that means you have a standard. It says don't remove the landmarks from what? The landmarks is the boundaries that your fathers have set up. That means how Abraham, Isaac, Jacob, Jesus, amen, set up. Amen? He was our example. He is our example. But what he set up for the boundaries we're supposed to have in our life. Amen? When you have boundaries, you don't see your life all crazy and chaos. When you remove boundaries, what ends up happening? Chaos comes in. And God said he's not a God of disorder or confusion, but he's of a God of order for what? Peace. Because when you have order, peace is there. When you got disorder and chaos, what happens? There's all kind of craziness that goes on. You got the Looney Tunes, the Fruit of the Looms, all coming up out of everywhere. Amen? <laughs> got them all. You got, you got all the fruitcakes coming out, everybody. And they're giving us the standard. I don't know what, what, what standard you're going to give. I don't know, but I know God's word. Look at what it says here in Deuteronomy 4. And I'll close out. We could finish it a different day. But I, I just want you to see something about what God's word is saying, because obviously I'm not going to finish. He said, you shall not add to the word which I command you, neither shall you diminish from it. That you, may, that you may keep the commandments of the Lord your God, which I have commanded you. Has that changed? Revelation, at the end of the book, it says don't add or take away. <clears throat> Why? Because God has a standard. He doesn't want you adding to what he already put. Amen? He put the boundaries. He put the standard. It's very easy if we just follow what it is. He said his commandments aren't even grievous. Amen? If you love, you don't bring problems. People want, may hate you for it. They'd be like, man, this person loving too much. Can't take it no more. <laughs> Happened to me when I was younger. I met this family. I wasn't saved at the time. I didn't know they were Christians. They took me and my friend in. I was like, what in the world? I never met no family like this in my life. I was like, man, how do they even like me? You know, I didn't have good thoughts about myself, but I'm just saying they took us in, had us sit, eat it with their family. I'm like, man, I never met nothing like this before. I mean, it did do an impact because I was in California, and these people took us in. They took us to the hotel they had ownership of. I didn't only, I'm trying to figure out how I even met them. Well, we met some girls. That's what it was. And they took us home to their house. I didn't know they were Christians. This is before I was saved. I was like 17, 16. And then the man, the family was so nice. I ain't never, man, I ain't never met a family. Because all I used to hear is yelling, cussing, all that stuff. There was, that's all I grew up with. But then these people, they were just so nice. I said, is this real? I, I, I thought it was fake. I thought my mind was messing with me because I never met. People who are just nice in general, that loved you, that they didn't care how you looked. I mean, they show you how I used to wear a do rag and all that. You think I, I'm talking about, you think I, I'm not playing. This was out of California. I wasn't from, I'm from Detroit. So I was like, I'm in California. What's up with, and me and my friend was out there. I was like, man, I, I these people are unbelievable. I haven't forgot them to this day. If I could write them, I'd be like, man, I was like, these people. It, it did affect me because in my mind, I'm thinking, hey, is there really people like this? Because you don't walk into people. But here it is. 
like that. Now you do, you know, when you're around the right people. But if you live around all the people, it's always that. That's the kind of stuff you know. You know, you're not hearing anything good. I'm sorry, I'm keeping you all too long. But look at what it says here. He says, don't add or take away, which I command you. Watch what he says in uh, next verse. Your eyes shall still see what the Lord did of Baal Peror. Of all the, for all the men who followed Baal Peror, the Lord your God has destroyed them among you. See, they were going a different route. Baal Peror. Baal was that idol in the worship, and he was trying to curse the children of Israel and everything. But know what God did? They are no longer there. All the idols, all the money they thought they had, it's gone. But know who was still there? The children of Israel. And look at what he says here to them. But you who clung fast, look at that, you hold fast. He said, cling unto what is good and eschew that which is evil. You that clung fast to the Lord your God are alive, every one of you this day. He said, if, you, if a man wants to see long life, and delight in long or desires long life to see many days in Psalms 34. It says what? Let him refrain his tongue from evil and his lips from speaking guile. And what? Follow what's at peace. Amen? Because the Lord is over the righteous. His ears are over the righteous and his ears are open unto our, his eyes are over the righteous. His ears are open unto our prayer. But he said he'll satisfy us with long life to see many days. That's a promise. Long life, not hostile, chaotic, but long life to see what? Many days. Amen? And watch what he says here, last verse. Behold, I have taught you statues and ordinances as the Lord my God commanded me that you should do them in the land which you are entering in, entering to possess. So if you're at a job, you're entering in that job, there's a standard to live by. doesn't have to be always what the job is doing, but there, there should be, that's where I was going to go. I might have to talk about it next time, a moral compass in your life. You know what that is? Um, huh? Oh, she does. Uh, uh, a moral compass, they say, the world says, but a moral compass is a discerning of what's right and wrong in your own life. You know, the, you're, it's a compass. A compass gives you the direction, north, south, east, west, but it always should take you to where you're supposed to go. Well, the moral compass is how you need to live your life. Amen? And that's what you should be guided by. But who's the moral compass? The Holy Spirit in us. They'll lead us. He said, if, we be, if a man is made or led by the Spirit of God, they are the sons of God. And we're going to close in a minute. I see people getting... <laughs> Go ahead. But now, watch what it says, this last verse, and then I'll, I'll conclude it, all right? I, uh, I said I'll be short, but I'm sorry. It said, I try to finish at 11.30. What time we start at 11? I don't know. Some churches, they do these quick half-hour services. I, I don't know how they do it, but they narrow their message down to, like, from, like, bring it all the way to the simple points and done to get to the next, but man, I don't know, there's so much in this, you know, you got to squeeze it, everything in, you know, if you want to get all the juices out, you can and make that good drink for the fruit, you know, get that, uh, what's that juice maker, it squeezes everything up, so he said, so keep them and do them, this is in Deuteronomy 4, 6, this is thousands of years ago, by Moses, he wrote it. He said, keep them and do them, for this is your wisdom. It's so easy. You want wisdom? Follow God's word. If you need wisdom to help you in your walk, ask him for it. He'll give it to you. But the standard is just having the word of God in your life so you know what you can take to uphold against something else that isn't the standard. It's very easy. I mean, just it, to know what a standard is, is see what his word says and line it up to what something else is saying to, to, to dictate your life and just say, no, this isn't the proper way of doing things. And he said, if you do this, this will be your wisdom and your understanding in the sight 
of the peoples who, when they hear all these statues, will say what? Surely this great nation is a wise and understanding people. See, if you want people to see your life, they'll be like, man, this person, I don't know, they got so much wisdom. They, their walk, I can't understand. Yeah, it's Jesus. Amen? They'll be like, yeah, you know why God gives? He'll give you the hidden wisdom. It says in Proverbs chapter 2. The hidden wisdom is what man don't have. They think they're wise in their own eyes. But one more scripture and then I'm done. All right, one more. This is it. Look, at this is nothing different from what Paul said. Look at here in 1 Corinthians chapter 4. I think it is. Hold on. Yeah, 1 Corinthians 4. I want to see something. <clears throat> It says, I'm going to read out of the Amplified real quick. In verse 5, I want you to see something. It's 5 and 6, and then I'm done, okay? Is anyone getting anything today? I didn't even get in much scripture. I'm just sharing some things. But I want you to get a simplicit, you know, simplicity. Try to make it where it's, you know, elementary stuff. I don't have to get real sophisticated. There's nothing, you know, God's word's pretty plain. Amen. All you got to do is read it. And you, you can find what it says for your life. Amen. He said, do this. So don't make any hasty or premature judgments before the time when the Lord comes again. For he will both bring to light the secret things that are now hidden in darkness and disclose and expose the secret aims, motives, and purposes of the heart. Then every man will receive his due commendation from God. Now watch this. Now I have applied all this about parties and factions to myself and Apollos for your sakes, brethren, so that from what I have said of us as illustrations, you may learn to think of men in accordance with Scripture and not to go beyond that which is written. See, that you can look at people according to what the Word of God says and not beyond that. Why? So that none of you may be puffed up and inflated with pride and boast in favor of one minister and teacher against another. So he's saying, listen, everyone God's given gifts to, but what he's saying as an application is don't go outside the scripture. He said always keep things in line with what the word of God says, because they were saying, well, I'm a Paulus, I'm above Barnabas and all that, and then they want to go even outside of what God's word says we're supposed to do. You know, so someone says, yeah, I'm better than them and all that. It says we're not even supposed to measure each other or compare one another with each other. You know, he said this is even wise. We're not supposed to be comparing like, oh, yeah, they're better than me. Oh, I think I'm better than them. Yeah, I could do more. No, -uh, that isn't how God's body works. Amen. Everyone's given talents. God's going to judge every man at the end of the day, and he'll judge it by the talents he's given too to you, whether you use them or don't use them. But if you have one or five or ten, use what God's given you and be content with that till he gives you more. Amen. You don't have to pressure yourself with more because you see someone else, hey, they're doing all that, and you're not. Amen? So that's the thing God's given, but we never do things outside of what the Scripture says because Paul was right, and we always stay in line with what the Word of God says. Amen? So you don't stray to the right or to the left. Amen? But you stay down the plumbing line. Praise God. Let, let us close for now, and then I, I didn't even get into everything I want to say. But, praise the Lord, we'll close for now, amen, so we can let uh, people do their due diligence today. But we'll close, amen. And uh, 
we, we just want, you know, people to take things because we're living in a time right now. We, we got to be more serious about what God's word says, amen, to apply it in our lives. I just want, my thing is just to encourage you, motivate you, amen, stir you up, amen, that we don't be forgetful of what really the standard of God is in our life, amen. Sometimes you can have things come into your life. And one of the scriptures, it says this, when the enemy comes in like a flood, the spirit of the Lord will do what? Lift up a standard. That's that plummet line against them. When the enemy comes in like a flood to flood your mind, flood this society, flood the way things are, what are we supposed to do? The Spirit of God's in you. He lifts up a standard. Amen? That you don't stray away from what His standard is just because a flood's coming in. Amen? It's got to be like the people. When the flood came here in Florida, what happened? People were waiting to go and help. That's a good standard. They came, they were waiting on waiting by thousands till after it went away to go ahead and help and get the people who needed it. Amen? Now, they were telling them to leave. Some of them, it was a little late, but I'm just saying they came in to help. If they didn't have any type of moral standard or anything, they'd be just like, man, let them help themselves. That wouldn't even be a standard. But see, people with the heart, they want to go do something. They want to help people. Amen? They want to make a difference. Amen. Praise God. So we're going to close. Amen. Father, we just thank you for your word this day. We ask that your word just stirs up within us, Father God. We thank you for stirring up the Holy Spirit, the gifts of you, Father God, in each and every person, Father. We thank you, Lord. Hallelujah that you can help each and every one of us as we just take the plummet of your word, the standard of your word, to be impactful in this society. I ask you to even to show each and every person, Lord, wherever they're at, because you said to go into all the world, Lord, to go into the society, to go into the system, not to be part of it, but to influence it, Father God, and share the gospel. Share the lifestyle of what you have to offer in this world, Father God. We thank you, Lord. We glorify you. In the mighty name of Jesus, hallelujah. Lord, and I just ask right now, if someone doesn't know the Lord today, knew the Lord, maybe they strayed from the standard, the plummet line. Maybe they got off course. Well, today you could get back on that plummet line, that standard. All you got to do is just come to the Lord. You ask him, you just say, Lord Jesus, forgive me. Forgive me for moving from that plummet line. I'm coming back to that foundation that you laid that isn't moved. And maybe you never even knew the line, the standard. I never knew it before I came to the Lord. Kind of know some things, but you don't if you don't really know Jesus, but if you want to know him, he'll put a standard in your life. Man, it'll change your life forever. All you got to do is accept him. And when you ask him to come into your life, it changes everything. It makes a difference in your life. All you got to do is say, Lord Jesus, that's me. And I want a different standard in my life. I want a standard that glorifies you not myself. I ask you, Lord Jesus, to save me, change me, and be Lord of my life. I believe in what you've done. You died for me, and you rose again. I thank you for changing me now, Lord, in the name of Jesus. Heal me, deliver me, make me free. Thank you for doing it now, Father. In the name of Jesus, set them free now. Deliver them now in Jesus' mighty name. I thank you, Father, 
We give you glory, honor, and praise for doing it. In the name of Jesus right now. In Jesus' mighty name. If you prayed that and you asked the Lord, if you came back, we just wanna we just want to welcome you to the family of God, because you're family now. It's an eternal family. Amen. It's just that change of breath of what you ask that comes out of your mouth that can make a difference in your life. That could change you in a twinkling of an eye from darkness to light. Amen. So if you did, we'd love to give you some material. You just contact us and we'll be able to send you some things, get in touch with you. We just want you to know we love you. God loves you. Jesus died for you. He loves you. And he's Lord. Amen. So we ask you to have a blessed day. Have a wonderful Thanksgiving if we don't see you this Wednesday. Amen. Because every day is a Thanksgiving day. Amen. And we're going to do for this Wednesday. Amen. We're going to have a Thanksgiving day dinner. Amen. But bless you guys and we'll pray. Praise God.